In this video, I'm going to show you how you can chat with YouTube using a combination of AI and knowledge graphs so that you can visualize the content of videos for a certain topic like I did in this case for AI. These are top 20 videos from YouTube on AI. And then I can go into the chat box here and I can ask any questions. So for example, what are the current trends in AI? And what happens now is that Infranodus, the app that I'm using to do that, it uses the underlying knowledge graph structure and also RAG to generate the response that is based on the content of those videos. So it analyzes all the relevant content of the videos that relate to my question and then generates a response for me. It also does something really interesting. It identifies structural gaps in the graph and then generates a question that is based on those gaps. So basically you have the gaps here and uh, it shows that there are two topics um, in the videos on AI that are language generation here and chatbot programming. And there is a gap between them. It identifies it because it sees that they're not so well connected in the videos that are found on YouTube on the topic of AI. So what it does, does it then generates a question which would link those two together. And that's usually how you produce really interesting ideas. So you can use it not only to chat with the content, but to also generate interesting ideas in relation to any topic. So here it generates a question, for example, how can the ability of GPT programs to learn and remember user interactions enhance the development of machines with, with general artificial intelligence creating systems that not only perform tasks, but also understand and predict human needs? So that's a really interesting and maybe a little bit strange question, but that's the whole point that it found a gap and then it generated a question that bridges the, this gap. So if we want, we can actually send this question back to the chat box here and then use uh, the AI to answer that very question that it generated. So we can also generate content and the interesting questions using the AI and then generate the responses. And if we like something, then we save it to notes here and keep them for further uh, exploration. If you're interested to learn how it works, keep watching and I will demonstrate it step by step. Also, please subscribe to this channel so this content can get recommended to other people and to support my work. We will be using an app that's called Infranodus and to import the channel, we will go here into apps and then you can click on brainstorm an idea and choose a topic. In this case, I'm going to choose AI. And I'm going to say that I want to, to extract content from the web. So I'm going to click here and then I'm going to say I want to extract content from YouTube videos. So when I click on YouTube videos, I have the search query here. Here I just say that I want to analyze video content, subtitles. And in the advanced settings, I can say that I want the top 20 results and I want the videos to be sorted by relevance. Uh, so that's basically YouTube recommending what are the top 20 videos for the topic of AI in this case, and then Infranodus is going to extract the subtitles and generate a knowledge graph based on this. It takes usually a couple of minutes because it's quite a lot of content, but in the end you will see something like this. You will have a visualization of the graph, which is in itself really useful because it shows you what are the main topics uh, that those videos are talking about. So for example, I can see that they're talking a lot about models and uh, GPT and robots, right? And if I want, I can actually click this button here and generate the names for all those clusters. So the way that it works is that every concept is visualized as a node in the graph. And when they occur together, they're closer to each other on the graph. And if they belong to the same topic, they have the same color. And then Infranodus identifies those topics and it highlights them for you here um, in the analytics panel AI Insights. So you have one topic that's quite prominent on data modeling. Um, then you have another smaller one on Google search. Like it has more nodes, but the nodes inside or the words inside are smaller. So it's maybe a little bit less relevant. Then human robot interaction is another big topic and chatbot programming. So there we have the videos on AI visualized. We understand what are the main topics inside. Um, it also provides a quick summary and an interesting question to explore. So we can even start with this question. If I want, I can copy it to AI here and then it opens the chat box here, which is available also here. And then it copies it into the chat box and then you can use uh, this setting to derive the answers from this context. And then I click chat and it's going to try to answer the question that it itself generated based on the gap that it identified in the structure of this discourse. So that's quite interesting because it can help you get started. For example, here 
we had a question on how can the development of chatbots and AI programs designed to remember and run as per human in instructions evolve to create robots that not only perform tasks but also feel and respond to, to human emotions, potentially transforming future human-robot interactions. So that's quite interesting because it's bringing in this emotional aspect and asking how it would evolve and how we can get inspired from chatbot and uh, text models. And here's providing an answer. Uh, integrating effective computing and emotional intelligence into AI systems could lead them to understand and react to human emotions more effectively, offering richer interaction. So it's talking about effective computing and emotional intelligence. And emphasizing empathy in AI development can bridge the gap between task-oriented functionality and emotionally resonant experiences, transforming our relationship with technology. So that's quite interesting because it's bringing this emotional aspect into AI, which I think is quite interesting. And all this is based on these YouTube videos. And if I want, I can now dig a little bit deeper. So if I click on Make AI Query, I can use this chat box uh, to just ask any question to this content. So for example, I can say, what are some examples of effective AI? And then if I click chat, let's see, I'm improvising. I haven't yet tried it, so, so I don't know what it's going to produce. But I found this topic interesting, so I want to discover uh, more about it. Here it says, effective AI examples include chat box that can detect uh, user emotions through text analysis, emotional recognition systems in devices like smartphones for personalized interactions, and interactive robots designed to respond to human emotions, enhancing customer service or caregiving scenarios. So that's interesting because it provides already some techniques which can be used and also some applications, some areas where you can apply it. So for example, in customer support or when you want to provide care. Right, And I like that it's not talking about uh, some kind of virtual girlfriends or boyfriends or sex bots and stuff like that. So it's going into a quite interesting direction and uh, it's not uh, saying some generic stuff or some obvious stuff. So that's something really nice about it. Um, I can also switch the subject. So for example, I can look at the graph and be like, Okay, there's a lot on data modeling, for instance, here, right? So I can click on that topic, and if I decide to explore it further, I can ask the system to summarize the visible topic. So it's going to uh, send only the content that relates to this topic into the chat box. And uh, here it says that the text discusses generative AI models that create new content based on existing data and the process of training models using supervised and unsupervised learning. It also touches on the potential risks and benefits of AI development in various fields, right? So for example, I can say, uh, if I click elaborate here, I actually can develop this statement further. So the AI generated the statement for me, and now I can say, okay, um, elaborate on this statement. So develop this idea further. And then I click chat, and then it's gonna try to kind of talk more about the subject. Um, and uh, then you can actually explore the, the, the content in an iterative way like this by sending it more and more data inside. So here it says that generative AI models by leveraging large data sets bridge the creative gap between data and innovative outputs across diverse fields through supervised and unsupervised learning. They're not just tools for developers, but catalysts for transformations in art, decision making and interaction dynamics. So that's quite interesting. Actually, uh, I want to develop this a little bit further, so I'm going to select this and try to elaborate this a little bit further. And I can actually change it. I, I can say explain in what way this can be done specifically. And then I click chat and it's going to take this part of the statement that it generated and come up with a response that will be more practical in a way, right? So it's giving me some technical information for how it can use it. And that's great because basically I took the content from YouTube that was about AI, I visualized it, um, generated a knowledge graph from it, so I have the underlying semantic structure, so to say, and then I use this underlying semantic structure to then generate uh, interesting ideas and to explore a certain topic. And as you know, YouTube is really great for uh, generating really interesting content and for finding out some really new stuff. So it's a really great tool if you want to learn about uh, a new idea or if you want to understand what's happening in the public discourse. So that can be a really useful tool. 
I encourage you to try it. And um, if you like, you can also use some of the advanced features of Infranodo. So for example, one thing that I like to do and what it does automatically actually when you make a search query, it removes the most uh, frequently used terms so you can see the context around it. Because we made a search on AI, so obviously all the results on AI, they will have the word AI inside, right? So this is why I'm gonna hide it and it does it automatically and then I see the context around it. But for example, what I can do now is that I can select some other stuff that I find quite obvious. So for example, I know that uh, a lot of videos will talk about models. So I'm gonna hide model also and see what is the context around it. And for example, make and things, like these are words that I used quite a lot in videos, so I'm going to hide them as well, you know. And then gradually what will happen is that I will uncover more and more interesting content uh, underneath uh, this more obvious stuff. So that's a really good approach and how you can use this graph interactively also by just kind of slicing the layers of the content and then getting to the more interesting stuff. So for example, here I see that there's something on Google that comes up quite a lot, right? So it's quite interesting that people discuss Google a lot. I would think it would be OpenAI more, but no, a lot of them are talking about Google in the videos that YouTube selected, right? And in fact, I can even click on Google and maybe also, let's say, on GPT. And what I can do also here is if I go into this AI chat, it actually understands what I selected, and then I can ask it to generate some content that relates to those selected words, but it will also feed the underlying structure. So it will generate something really relevant, like what those videos on AI are saying about Google and GPT. And here it has a whole summary of those videos. So you can also use it to kind of understand some parts of content and jump to the interesting ideas. And of course, if you're like a more technical user, you can also go into the relations panel here and see which other concepts uh, Google and GPT are connected to, so you can really explore it in much more detail. If you do search engine optimization, for instance, this can be a very useful feature for you. And if you just like watching videos on YouTube, uh, another really great feature is that when you select those nodes, you can also go into the statements panel here and actually jump to the parts of the video where they're talking about uh, this stuff exactly. So for example, here. There is a video where they talk about Google and GPT. And I jumped directly example, to the part of the video which is where they're talking about this. So that's quite amazing because then I can navigate this content in a non-linear way and jump to the parts that relate to my interests. And I can use this graph to visually explore those ideas. So this is how it works. You can try it out on infranodus.com. And if you have any questions or comments, please leave them in the comments below. And also please subscribe to this channel so you can get informed about the new videos as they come out. Thank you very much.